Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Hydra and this is Rust Console Edition. Are you ready for what I have in store for you today? Well, if so, then like, subscribe, and follow me. Alrighty folks, so a lot of people have been asking how to actually wire a base. Um, it's not just one thing to actually have it uh, put in front of you, but to actually see it made uh, and where to place it. So I built this little set here. Um, and yeah, so we're going to build this stuff out uh, for you. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our auto light system. It's going to require a small battery, a blocker, an electrical branch, um, and a ceiling light, of course. And you're also going to need one solar panel as well. So with the small battery, we're going to place it on the ground here next to the TC, or wherever your power wall is going to be. Uh, it's a wall that you know is going to get blown up, in this case it's this one. Um, and just to the left of it, we're going to put uh, an electrical branch, and then we're going to put our blocker. We're also going to need a wire tool, obviously, for doing any power. Um, so let's get this all hooked up. So we're going to go from the power out on our electrical branch. That's going to go to the power in on our small battery. And then from the power out, we're going to bring that one into our blocker at the bottom of it. There is a side one there, we're not going to go into that one. Also, you don't have to make your wires this neat, um, because you don't want people to really know where the wires are going. I'm just doing it this way, so you have a good example and can see clearly of where the wires are going. Now, uh, this one right here. Uh, this is going to go into that other spot here into our blocker. Now this is my uh, auto light system, well not my auto light system, but the auto light system. Uh, if you want to know how this works more in depth, I do have videos uh, on this in the playlist, so check them out. Um, but at this point now, we're going to be putting down our ceiling light. So for your ceiling light, um, these things have a really big radius um, and they work over a couple of floors so you can even have these three floor, uh, three or four floors tall. Um, but you want to find a central location. Um, this way your whole base is going to be lit up at night uh, and you'll be able to see everything. Uh, and you'll also be able to hook up five lights into this system through the pass-through. So if you do find that you need more light um, in other rooms or parts of your bases, uh, parts of your base you can uh, totally set that up um, by simply going through the pass-through. So one of the things I like to do is I like to run my wires into the corners of these door frames. Uh, it's going to hide a lot of the wiring and where you're running your wiring. Um, and one trick that you can do too, especially if you've already got your uh, frames upgraded to stone here, is you can kind of crisscross the wires through um, the frame here and it's just going to hide the wire from anybody so you can't see it, at least from the outside of the loot room. Um, or alternatively, what you can do, um, as shown here, uh, again, you want to try and get it as far into the corner as possible if you can, but sometimes it's difficult. So what I like to do, especially in these smaller bases, um, is run my uh, wire down uh, the... the uh, stone frame here. It could be a little difficult, especially the stone bottoms, but eventually you can, uh, you'll get it. The farther back you go sometimes, the easier it is to place, as you can see. Um, there it was really uh, high off the ground, so sometimes the farther back you go, um, the nicer you can place it. But still, these can be a pain in the butt, so um, again, in a smaller base like this, I wouldn't worry too much about uh, hiding your wires. But if you really want to, uh, what you do is you do the crisscross thing, um, but down a floor. So now again, we've kind of hidden the wire in the wall. You don't really know where it goes. And then for my favorite trick is I like to hide my wires in the foundations. Now again, you don't want to do it. I'm using this as an example, but 
it's really hard to do this in water uh, because you can't really see the bottom of the base because the closer it is to the base uh, of the base then the more you can hide your wire so you want to typically do this on flat land uh, but if you can't just do the best you can to get the wire to go as slow as possible like there for instance uh, and then we're going to go back inside now the reason we're doing this is because we're going to run the wire through the foundations um, to where we need to go specifically this corner so boom by putting it there now we have no wire all right where'd the wire go um, and it's important to hide your wiring because you don't want to lead everybody to your electronics um, and it's better than running it along the door frames um, even if you do have garage doors you can hide the wire behind the garage doors but as soon as the garage door gets blown up uh, it's pointless but as you can see the light just turned on um, that's because the batteries do come with a little bit of power to start um, and we don't have a, we're not supplying um, our little system here with enough power to block the power coming from the battery here so as you can see we have five minutes um, that's not long enough a rust night is about 10 minutes and then you got to wait a minute or two to collect power so really you want to have at least 15 minutes on your battery um, but with just one solar panel um, you're going to totally be able to fill that battery all the time and you're going to have more than enough power every night uh, even to run five of those lights um, like i said you can have up to five so uh, and this is also a good time to check out your roof now solar panel placement you want your panels facing south either southeast southwest but mainly facing south because the sun travels from southeast to southwest um, I know that there's a lot of conflicting reports of people telling you to face them uh, north and south. Don't face them north. You're not getting enough power. Uh, again, if you watch my how to place um, solar panels video, uh, you'll be able to see that uh, north is just not the way to go. Um, and that doesn't change throughout wipe. So as you can see here, we're placing um, low walls, not half walls. We're doing low walls because low walls, for the most part, aren't tall enough. Uh, where they're going to cover the solar panel except for maybe right there so if we do have to place a solar panel there that's going to be our last one um, as you can see I'm facing south there's the sun uh, the sun right now is uh, a little bit to the south uh, west right here so it's probably in the afternoon so I'm guessing it's probably like two three o'clock in the afternoon uh, if I was to look at um, if I was to look at the time there now for your solar panel light, um, this one I would mostly um, say that you want to face it southwest um, because if you face it southeast or south, uh, it has a habit of not turning on or uh, turning off too soon when it's still a little bit dark out um, and it gets a little dark in your base. So uh, I would definitely do that. Now, as you notice there, there's four little, um, little nibs that stick off of it. Uh, you're going to pick the nib on the bottom right hand corner and if you look at that nib 99 percent of the time you'll be able to hook up to the solar panel even if everything is covered and blocked now another way you can hide your wires is by doing this you put them in your walls center them in your wall and then run it down to the ground and then under the ground into where you want to go um, but because uh we are in a two by two and i know i have a door frame right underneath here um, I can actually run everything down through the center so I don't have to have any wires exposed on the outside telling people that I have uh, solar panels up on my roof. Uh, and again, it's just going to run down this pillar, uh, but we're going to run it right here inside our wall. Uh, and now it's completely hidden. You can't even see it. You don't know that it's coming down from the roof. Um, and then we're going to hook it up to our system, um, which is going to go into the bottom of our thing here. Now. If you, if it keeps showing you a connection point, you don't want to connect to that connection point. Um, if you saw there, I backed up. So if you give yourself a little bit of distance, then um, you'll be able to, it'll get rid of that. But what's happening now is we're getting enough power from the solar panel that it's blocking the power coming from the battery. So now the battery is charging. Um, and because it's blocking that battery power, um, the light turned off. Now, as soon as the solar panel stops collecting power, it's going to stop stopping the blocker, 
uh, and it's going to allow the power to run through. And uh, so right now we're getting 17 power going to the battery, which is more than enough to cover you for all you're using. So now we're getting into the, the real setup here. This is your infinite power system. For more details on that, please watch that video on my infinite power systems. There's a couple videos on them where I go more in depth. Um, this video is long enough, so I don't want to go too far into it. Uh, but we're going to start off by placing uh, two electrical branches um, and then a blocker. I kind of messed up here, so just give me a second. There we go, get that set up. Um, now I'm going to change the color wire here. Again, I wouldn't change the, the wire colors. I would have everything the same wire color so people uh, can't follow lines and no systems or anything like that. Uh, but for you guys, we're going to use colors. Um, and a smaller base like this, it really doesn't matter. Um, especially if you're hiding your lines well, but um, you know, still I would, I would recommend that you don't. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect uh, the first branch from the right port uh, into the second branch and then the left branch of that uh, is going to go into the blocker. So we're, we're kind of creating the same system as uh, the light system down there, uh, but it's going to be set up a little bit different. Um, and then we're also going to need our um, AND switch here, or, or, or switch, sorry. We're going to need our OR switch. So from the blue blocker, we're going to go into the B side. And then from the A side, we're going to go into the left branch of our electrical branch. So basically, um, and then we're going to set this branch to 99 because we want to match the amount of power that's going to be coming out of this blocker here. Because once the 100 power is sent from the battery, sent through the blocker, it's only got 99 power. So we want to match that. Um, so that way we're not running less power. Um, now we're running, the rest of our power is going, um, being split to, is being split into the blocker to block the power coming from the battery, which is what we're going to go in place now. Um, kind of, uh, similar to how it blocks the power coming from our other battery running our light system. So this battery, um, is, um, only active at night. Um, it's only running power at night, so you could hide this system, uh, this battery a lot better. Um, it's completely up to you, but um, at the front here, people like to think that um, if they blow it up, they're going to completely destroy your power system, and for 99% of power systems, that would be true, uh, but not for yours, as long as it's daytime. Um, even if this battery is destroyed, your power system is going to run. So. Uh, we're going to do the same trick. We're going to run outside. We're going to go look at the foundation, get it nice and low and tight to the foundation, just like we did there. Um, you can see too that even if I get over here to try and get a tight angle, if you move over, it still looks uh, kind of wonky. So get it as tight and, and as close as you can by looking right at it. Uh, and then run back inside. Um, and we're going to hook this up into the system. So this seems to be our main corner here, so we're going to continue to use it. And now because we're um, covering the wires from going through there, it's so much better than running it across the roof. And now we want to, because we're coming from the power out, we're going to run it into the power in of our blocker here. So this system is going to take over at night. Now if you add one windmill up on your roof, um, it does make you a bit more of a raid target, um, but that will negate their use of the battery completely um, and allow you to only run uh, half the amount of solar panels. But uh, this is a solar only setup. Um, it's kind of like a stealth setup. So um, anyway, from the right uh, side of the blocker, we're going to go down and we're going to go and do our famous little trick here again. Uh, and we're going to run that into the other side of our battery. Again, we're going to try and avoid using the uh, same corners or the same foundations because if somebody does go around and notice these things, uh, we want them in different spots so they don't know that uh, which exactly which room and uh, everything is running into the power and whatnot. Um, and again, that little bit there doesn't really uh, help or hurt. 
um, you can cover that up with uh, the next thing that you put in that corner like a small box uh, and then some furnaces up to you so uh, a little trick that I do there is if I want to make my line straight I go to my line and then just go look straight down and can uh, run yourself some nice straight lines make everything look nice uh, and then we're going to come back to our system here now everything's going um, well everything's running off the power and as you can see we have 49 power coming out of there because we have 50 power coming from the battery um, and then we don't have any power blocking the blocker because we don't have our solar set up yet so it's running straight off of battery power now so now we're going to get to the point where we're going to set up the actual system uh, itself um, that allows us to use all of that power and where all of that goes so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add an electrical branch now most people are going to use a switch in this spot but I like to use an electrical branch and I use it the same way as a switch um, because I don't like to have other people have access to that switch so only people authorized on the TC and holding a wire tool are able to configure that and just by changing the power amounts you can turn systems on and off uh, the same way you can with the switch so it's a much more secure system uh, which is why I use uh, electrical branches um, now what we're doing right here is we're creating what's called an electrical tree so we're going to take all that power and then we're going to distribute it through all of those uh, electrical branches so then that way, uh, each system that we run off of this, um, a system being like a lockdown system, a door camper alarm system, automatic doors, uh, that kind of stuff, uh, we can set power values for each system so uh, we can better manage our power and get uh, and run more things off of our system. So this is what is called daisy chaining. That's when you link one system to the next. And this is what's creating the electrical tree. Uh, and again, I'm gonna change some colors here of some wires so you guys can see where all of the power is running out. Um, but you always wanna run it out of the right side. Uh, think of the left side of an electrical branch as um, the priority queue. And um, you can determine, you know, the the set amount of power that runs through there um, that gets priority and then all of the remaining power gets through set through the right side so your most valuable systems that you want to run like turrets and stuff they're going to be on the left um, and things like your lockdown systems and whatnot um, are going to be on your right or heaters or cameras whatever so now for this system um, for a medium battery you're only going to need four solar panels but for a large battery you're going to need uh, nine solar panels in order to keep up with everything uh, you actually need a little bit less if you're running my system you really only need eight um, but nine is a little bit trickier to uh, configure and it's just going to give you that little bit extra kick of power just so you never have to worry so we're going to set up a nine solar panel system right here um, and the key to um, setting up uh, your power system uh, especially up on the roof is however many power intake systems you have subtract one and that's how many root combiners you need so because we have nine solar panels we're going to be connecting we're going to need eight root combiners uh, and we're going to set them up into another electrical tree now here's another tip for the build servers you can build yourself a miner's hat or a candle hat like I did here and then craft yourself some instant low grade uh, throw on the candle hat and that's going to give you some instant light so you can continue to work uh, and not have to worry about anything all you have to do is hold triangle uh, like a flashlight uh, and you're good to go so we're going to set up four uh, and then we're going to set up three and then we're going to set up another one here uh, up on top root combiners don't take any power to run unlike all the other electrical components um, they just allow you to take multiple power sources and combine their power so we're going to connect eight different solar panels to there um, and then we're going to take those root combiners um, and we're going to connect them uh, together into an electrical tree as well combining all of their power so let's grab a different color 
um, and we'll make our electrical tree. So we're just going to go and do the two underneath, our end ones here. And then we're going to take those ones and we're going to combine them together uh, into the next root combiner. And then we're going to take that one and we're going to connect it to the final root combiner. So you can kind of see how we have a little tree here. And this last spot is for our ninth solar panel, uh, which is what we're going to go and hook up first. Um, just so we don't forget to hook that up, because uh, that's the most important thing. Um, well, not the most important thing, but like, it's an important part. Uh, you don't want to forget that. You'll be scratching your head, you know, why do I, where am I missing a spot, whatever. So I find that if you do that one first, um, that's the best. Now, these smaller bases, it doesn't really matter how you set up your solar panels, um, just as long as they're facing in the right direction. Um, you don't really need a lot of solar panels, you know, eight or nine solar panels isn't a lot. Um, so just as long as they're facing south. And I would always start on the north facing wall, just because again, those, um, the, the low walls in the back could prevent a little bit of uh, power gain. Uh, throughout the day so we're going to uh we're going to you know start up the uh the north side and work our way to the south um again if we have to choose you know we can get northwest or northeast if we have to have a a panel crooked as as you can see i can't quite fit in in there but i can kind of crook it here so i'll fit it in here there are better ways to do this again you can play around with this on a test server just kind of build the layout of your roof um, and then you know put up your your little walls here uh, and then go around and place all of your solar panels so you'll have a better idea um, solar panels they do um, their quality of them does matter uh, same with the wind turbines the quality of them does affect their um, power intake capability um, they're cheap to repair. It's only one high qual for uh, the solar panels. You just walk up to them, hit them with a hammer. Um, easy to repair. So every now and then, um, check your solar panels. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's important. Now, I'm just arranging them uh, random like this. Again, I wasn't thinking about it at the time um, I was making this, but you really should put your panels closer to the center there. Uh, again, so those low walls don't um, affect you. Now, the beauty of uh, running in a 2x2 two two or 2x3 is the fact that you can literally run every one of these things down the center uh, pipe here, and or a wall frame, door frame, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you can run it down the center column. Oh, I just called it another thing. And connect it directly to your power system from there. So again, we're going to connect to this um, to this first uh, branch here. Again, you don't have to be so picky with this. This is the last room of the raid. People are going to be raiding this base from the outside, uh, not even uh, from the door path. Sorry. Um, so you don't have to hide the wires in this room too much, especially since you have everything already on the wall. Um, and then now we have to go around and get all of these set up. Now this video is already long enough. Um, so I don't want to waste too much of your time so just a quick tip is that instead of uh, always going back up and starting at the panel and coming back down you can start from here too uh, and then go back up so let's skip forward so here you can see I've ran all the wires down I've done the best that I can uh, in order to get them um, lined up you know did what I could but now this thing is blocking me from this corner. So what I have to do is back up so this, the spot disappears um, and then I can get it in, find the last spot and get it all set up. So now all of my solar panels are hooked up uh, and then they're combined into their own root combiner which are then combined into another root combiner which combines up into the top one. Um, and as you can see, some of these solar panels are already starting to gain power. So uh, the system's starting to run. Uh, there's not a lot yet here. It's still early, early morning. We've got what, 27, 28 power. So we're not doing too badly. Now the last thing we have to do is take all of that combined power 
and put it into our infinite power system. Now this is less than an infinite power system, just a really good power management system. Um, once you have the wind turbine, then it becomes an infinite one, and then the battery does become a true backup system. But um, as you can see now, we got some lights going. Um, this would be going because we're not producing enough power. However, this battery is dead um, because we've already uh, we already drained it out. So as soon as we start producing more than that 99 power, it will go to the battery and start charging it. However, uh, because our battery is dead and because we're producing low power, um, a good thing to do is, especially once you start the system, is you're going to configure this branch to just be two, the standard default two. Uh, we're not going to run anything out of our system. Um, and th that's going to be enough power to uh, block the battery uh, block the blocker so the battery pa uh, isn't being used and all of the power that's coming in from our solar panels now are being used to charge the battery so it's just an extra way of quick charging our battery um, without having to worry about um, anything else and then as soon as we start producing or the battery is full um, and we start producing well as soon as the battery is full uh, we're going to reconfigure this branch back to 99 uh, and then we're just going to let it sit there um, and forget about it. And that's always going to be uh, set to 99. Now I know this medium battery right now can't support the 99 power that comes out of it so really it's overkill while the, I'm on this medium battery it should be 49 not 99 um, because that's all the battery power that uh, the medium battery is able to produce. But when you do put a large battery in, uh, you will have to set that to 99. So, um, and with the power system that we've already got up on the roof, uh, it doesn't matter. So uh, again, this kind of acts like my switch. So I can determine how much power is being run into the system. Um, and as you can see here, um, all of this stuff is just running from uh, one to the next, uh, as I was describing earlier. But as you can see, it, it's not receiving any power. So let's turn this up to 99. Um, now we're still not producing the right amount of power, but we did get a little bit of charge on the battery. So you can see the two blue, uh, green uh, dots down there on the blocker. But um, so we're sending out our two power into our branch out. Um, that's just default, there's nothing we can do about that. Um, but we're only sending, which means we're getting all of the rest of the power sent out, which means the light's flashing. However, if we switch this to 100, now all of our um, power is no longer being sent there because priorities are always being sent to the left um, side of the branch. Meaning we do lose two power. Um, when it is connected to that side of the branch. So for those uh, sticklers on power, uh, you can also connect it to the left branch and it works in the same sort of way, um, just the opposite. So when this branch gets set to uh, two, uh, your default two, or you can even set it to zero and it'll go to default two, um, it'll no longer send enough power through, but it does send two power through. But um, it's, it doesn't matter so much on this system because we are going to be running turrets after it, uh, which means we're going to be running a three-way splitter out of this. And because we're going to be connecting that three-way splitter to the left side of that branch, it's already going to get that one priority power um, that's left after the uh, electrical branch gets its power, uh, meaning nothing's going to run and nothing's going to have enough power to run afterwards. So again, I like, I really like using these things as uh, switches instead, uh, because you can turn things on and off independently uh, without having to actually have a switch on the wall and worry about anybody coming in using that switch. Um, just like uh, here, so if we're going to be running three turrets, we're going to need 31 power. Um, and we're also going to need to reset this back to our 100. Now we're not going to get 100 power out of this. Uh, because again, we're only going to get 98 power um, after uh, everything comes out of there. Um, and then we're going to lose another power there. So we really only have 97 power to play with. Um, so, But as soon as we set that down to 2, we can shut down everything. 
but if we don't want to shut down everything and we want to have everything else running then we can just reconfigure that first branch uh, just like this see so now we're shutting down everything including the turrets um, but if we want to shut down just the turrets then uh, we can we have the ability to do that as well and we don't need switches and it now costs the same amount of power so if you do want to run uh, some turrets though I do recommend that uh, you upgrade yourself to a large battery it's going to let you run uh, six turrets plus a uh, lockdown system uh, for your doors and uh, a few other small little um, base upgrades I would say so you're definitely going to want to upgrade this to a uh, large battery. So if you place it right here, again, next to your door, um, I'm just here in my simple starter base, uh, like my big. Um, I do have a tutorial on how to build this. So if you are new and want to uh, copy this in the same base that this was built in, um, then you can look that up uh, as well. That's a new video I just put up. Uh, but anyway, we're going to do um, the same trick. Now, uh, my line is invisible right now. This does happen sometimes, but as soon as you connect it, you will be able to see the line. Uh, and if you don't like where the line's placed, then you do have to run it again. Um, if you're really worried about wire placement, as soon as you see that happen, just rerun that first uh, attachment point and then restart and uh, redo it over again. Uh, we're going to run our battery back into here. Uh, which is why that uh, other line didn't bug me earlier even though it was crooked uh, and then we're just going to follow the same line all the way back into our large battery Especially if you get some of this power set up early, um, you can really hide that in honeycomb. You can get really uh, deep inside your base. So, but you know, power isn't always the easiest thing to come by. You can get electrical components here and there, but uh, yeah. and as you can see, it's the middle of the day. The battery is charging, um, and the whole it's not being used. So the whole system is being run right now, completely on solar. Uh, coming back here um, So we have uh, 10 power 11 power going into our generator uh, Our light system right now. Uh, we have 99 going in there uh, Into our right into our system, which means we're saving ourselves 20% loss from going into the battery um, And then I can't read that right now, but uh, I think that says like 60 or something like that 60 or 80 power going into um the battery so we're getting plenty of power to cover our nighttime battery usage and it's not being used right now either so uh, we're covering even more costs that way uh, you can get another battery in here um, it's very very uh, tight uh, it mostly a large another large battery can go in there but I prefer to keep my furnaces because believe me this one large battery is more than enough power to run this whole system um, and everything that you're going to need. Like six turrets in a small base like this is more than enough turrets uh, in order to cover you. So, yeah, moving forward. Um, speaking of turrets, let's get them uh, put down now. So, um, again, I'm just going to do uh, three turrets, just place them around uh, here inside the base. Nothing crazy nothing special just a demonstration for you guys so we'll put one here uh, we're gonna get one here into uh, the main room and we're also going to put another one up here on the shelf now uh, here's a another tip if you go to put one up on the shelf um, I chose not to actually but if that foot sticks through um, the door when they go to blow up the door they have the potential of blowing up turret behind it at the same time as the door um, and another tip when you're um, setting up your turrets uh, we're going to pick a different color here a little purple um, or blue sorry uh, and then we're going to put this underneath the turret 
we're gonna back up a little to find a spot underneath it and then that way we don't have this weird angle coming out of our turret um, and I do this for every turret that I put down I just find it that it's so much easier uh, and it just looks so much nicer uh, and then again I take advantage of being in such a small base low to the ground uh, and I'll even do this in some of my bigger bases too inside the china walls and stuff like that I'll run wires so um, it just makes things nice and easy uh, but we are going to choose a different connection point because I don't want to keep running it up that wall so we will go over here uh, beside the TC and we'll just run it up the edge of the TC. It also doesn't hurt that uh, the three-way splitter is right there as well so but uh, we'll get connected into the three-way splitter. Now one thing I will say about this because this is probably a good time to uh, mention this to you guys while I'm doing this um, is that when it comes to running turrets, sometimes the turrets are too far away, right? So one thing people want to do is they want to um, add in an extension line into their turrets, um, like by using an electrical branch or something like that, but just a, a bridge piece in order to uh, get everything connected. So. Um, the main problem with that is anything connected to a three-way splitter splits all the power distributed evenly. So if you have to add one more power to one thing, you have to add power, uh, one more power to all three things connected to it in order for that to work. So you're really losing a lot of power um, and with, um, with all of the turrets and everything else like that um, and then all of the pieces in order to set up all the turrets, you can't actually do that. Um, you don't have enough power to run that extra power to all of the turrets for you'd have to run all of them um, so uh, right now we need 31 and then we're going to set this uh, to 32 just to show you that you can turn off the rest of the system while keeping your uh, turrets all going uh, simply by putting one extra power uh, more than uh, what the actual turrets need because you need to be able to power that branch itself so 31, that's what that's set to. And if you want to turn off your turrets, you set it to two. All the extra power gets dumped and all of your turrets get turned off. So um, that's just a way of dealing with your turrets while keeping the rest of your system on. Um, as long as uh, the main branch down here is set to back to its uh, 100. So there we go, all of that extra power is now being sent through. The turrets are getting their 32 or their 31 power. Um, I'm going to connect that because it's annoying. Um, but yeah, so now we have um, all of that extra power. We have like 56 extra power here uh, to play with. So there's, uh, I, you know, you can set up more turrets. Um, and if you're going to set up more turrets, it's just a, a matter of putting an electrical branch and another three-way splitter over there on the wall and then hooking up uh, everything to the electrical um, branch instead of the three-way splitter uh, and making it um, 65 power uh, instead of 30, uh, 32 or 31 I should say uh, because you have an extra couple of things in there so one of the other ways you can hide those little wires that stick up behind the wall is you can place a couple of boxes um, there you go no one's ever gonna blow up this loot room so they're never gonna see the wires behind it um, as long as you don't lock the boxes, so don't lock the boxes. Um, and then you can hide your wiring system. So moving on, uh, we're going to get all of our doors hooked up. This is just a very, very simple um, automated door system for you. Um, you only want to use this system um, if, you're, if you want some more mobility in, in your base. Um, this is definitely going to help. So from the farthest spot away, you're going to go from the power in to the pass-through of the, the next closest um, door controller. And then you're just going to simply continue daisy-chaining the path all the way back along the door controllers. Uh, when placing the door controllers, I like to put them in the top frames up there, because sometimes I do like wire, uh, running my wiring along door frames, um, especially if uh, they haven't been upgraded to stone yet. If you leave them uh, wood and then run all of your uh, wires on the wood frames, then upgrade them to stone, 
Um, it completely hides all of your wires and you'll never see a single wire in your base. So that's the best way to do it. But if you have to uh, do your zigzagging or at the very least, uh, like in this case, uh, because I didn't like that orange there, uh, at the very least hide it behind, um, at the very least hide it behind your door frame uh, from the outside. So unless somebody actually jumps up here and looks in here, they're not going to see it. Um, more paranoia than anything. You don't really have to hide, hide your wires, but you know, don't care too much. Because again, this tutorial just to do this small base alone is uh, almost an hour long. So, you know, make your wires neat, but don't go crazy with it because you're gonna spend all of this time making it. You're gonna end up getting raided at some point, um, and then it's just a pain in the butt. So, um, yeah, so let's uh, let's keep going here. So we're gonna need one more electrical branch. And again, this is kind of acting like our switch um, in order to run everything. And this time we're gonna run it off the right side. We have to run it off the right side um, because the default two off the left means we're always gonna be running power into um, two of our, our doors and we don't want that. So two of our doors are always gonna remain open. So if you put it on the right hand side, uh, then we can configure the left to steal all of the power, taking all of the power away from the doors. So now we have to figure out uh, how many doors we have and how much power we need to run through the system. So you got to go through and count everything. Uh, I think I missed a door here or two uh, while I was doing this. But uh, so we're going to run through uh, and we're going to count everything and then we're going to configure that into our um, electrical branch for our doors. So I thought it was nine and as you can see you run around and all of those light up green um, except this one isn't lit up green and I didn't think about the one behind me. So uh, so we're gonna go back and this one can stay its uh, default to. And then we're gonna go add that one back, back in. And now all of them should be uh, good to go. Now, as you can see, it said uh, pair the door there. I'm gonna show you guys how to pair the doors here in just a second. But uh, we want to make sure that everything's running. So, yep, we have our 10 power. Everything is good. All of our doors are, uh, all of our door controllers are in. And now, if we want to close our doors, we just simply set it to two, and all of our doors are closed. Speaking of doors, uh, let's get them put in. So I'm going to show you two examples of different ways that uh, you can control your doors uh, on two different types of doors. So you can see an example on both. So garage doors, I would always hook up to the system and be on the, on the door controllers. They're a nightmare to open. They take forever, as you can see. Um, and it's the same thing for having to turn around, look up, see the thing, close the door. Right? It's just a nightmare. So if you keep all of your doors on the system, you can leave all of your doors open uh, while you're playing, while you're around base. And then when you go to leave base, uh, you can just simply hit that, or when you go to log off, you just simply hit that switch uh, and close all of your doors. Or if you think you're being raided, uh, same thing. So in order to pair a door, you have to unlock the door. You have to close the door uh, like that. Uh, and then look up at the thing hit square to pair it or whatever button on your console and then relock your door don't forget to relock your door it's important that you relock the door lock your doors <laughs> um, anyway so now that they're on the system we're going to uh, power our system and we're going to put in our 10 power that we had before and nothing happens because now all of them are powered and we already had them open but now we're going to add our two power and the door is closed. Now, because I forgot to put the right value in, because I forgot about that door, we just change that to 11, and then our door is open. And then when I change this back to two, or zero, because zero will also change it back to its default two, it's gonna close all the doors. Okay, and then we're gonna change it back to 11, and all of our doors are open. 
So this way we don't have to go running around opening and closing all of our doors in our base. They're all just going to be automatically open for us uh, and we're good to go. Now these doors, these are a little different. Um, so the, the second door inside your airlock, I would throw uh, one of these on um, because you always want this airlock door to be closed. So, and they open and close fast enough that you really don't have to worry about them being on uh, the timer or on the, the door system like you do the other one. So you're going to put down a laser by taking off the door and then pushing it all the way to the right, putting your lock back down. And then at this point, you do have to go and uh, repair your door um, because you did take the door off. But uh, I forgot. I will show you later, I think. Um, but yeah, so again, we're going to do the, the same trick where we go from opposite sides of the door frame uh, in order to run our power up the wall. Um, and again, this is what I mean by it's, it's difficult to hide your wiring and stuff behind these garage uh, doors. You can, you can hide, um, you can, um, but it's a, it's a big pain in the butt. Um, it, it does collide with the actual thing and as soon as the garage door disappears, um, it gets destroyed. So if you have to, running across the door frame, it's clearly running a door controller anyway. Um, so who cares if they see it and it's cool uh, little blue line uh, in your base again I would make all of these black uh, just because they are harder to see sometimes you do got to wiggle to get that closed um, so now all we have to do is just run the power back to um, our uh, power system and again we're going to use our little trick we're going to come outside. Now, um, lasers. So as soon as you trip the laser, it'll allow whatever extra power that you gave the laser to pass through the laser and activate whatever it is that's on the other side of it. Um, so uh, for this door system, because the door controller only needs one power, um, it was simple enough to it's, you can uh, leave the electrical branch at default two because it really only needs that uh, two power. Um, so it's a very, very cheap system, but it's going to get uh, save you a ton of time coming in and out of your base. And you'll see here in, uh, in a second, I'll give you an example. Um, but uh, I didn't notice it when I ran inside, but that blue line on the floor uh, is not correctly placed. So there we go. So now we got the default two, we got the laser going. And unfortunately, I didn't connect it to the floor. So this is a good lesson. Uh, double check your lines, right? And always, 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 if you're going to do, um, if you're gonna go uh, through the foundations, connect to the floor first, then go under the foundations. Otherwise, you're gonna have happen what I had happen, uh, where you get this big blue line going through your base and you definitely don't want that, so. Uh, try and pick a corner where there is nothing. Uh, there's a few things over there, but whatever. Uh, right around your base. Just trying to be random. Just back up. Uh, again, if even if a little bit of that blue line did came through there, our boxes are covering it nicely. Um, you also should go by and watch um, how to hide these power systems in loot rooms um, so you can have a completely hidden power system um, and it's just going to help you out, uh, out a lot just in case you do manage to keep your base after a raid but here's the system so you walk up to the laser it's going to open the door oh wait I forgot to pair the door so again make sure you <laughs> double check and uh, pair your doors by the end of this, you'll be a door pairing pro. So yeah, here we go. So you're coming into your base, you open your door, you walk in and the door closes right behind you. And you wanna leave, you walk up to the laser, the door opens and it closes right behind you. So your airlock door always closes behind you. All right, and then on your way out, you don't even have to touch the button. And if the door is open, uh, you just walk across the laser and you're good. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys like it. I know it was a long one, but I hope it's worth it. See you in the next one.